Hey everyone, Ben from Living Survival. Now a few videos back, I did a video with Tyler from T-Jack Survival comparing the differences, the advantages and disadvantages of wool versus synthetic. Tyler's back on my channel today and he's gonna show you a new product from Snug Pack. It's their versatile tactical bag. It's two bags in one, very similar to their special forces system. So he took that out on an overnight. He's gonna let you know what he thinks as well as sort of part two of the wool versus synthetic when it comes to sleep systems. So as you know, on my channel, I do a lot of reviews and then I throw skills into those review videos. Well, Tyler does sort of the opposite. He does a lot of skills videos and then throws reviews in on top of that. So make sure you head on over there and subscribe to his channel. Hey, it's Tyler with TJX Survival. I'm out doing some semi-primitive camping. Um, not been feeling so good this week, so the cold is really affecting me. But that's the most excellent time to test out a new Snug Pack sleeping bag. So stay tuned. All right, so a while ago, I did a, uh, a video on wool versus synthetic with Jim Noka from American Knife Company, and we covered clothing. So I want to kind of cover wool versus synthetic today with Matt. Um, I've already discussed a little bit about this snug pack bag. I love it, it works great. The downside on synthetic is it can't handle fire. If you're sleeping next to a fire and it's popping on you, as soon as an ember hits it, it's gonna drill a hole through it. You can prevent that by wrapping it in wool or putting a tarp over it or not sleeping too close to the fire. The positive upside is you're very, very warm. Um, as long as you stay dry, you're very warm. A downside again is that you get stinky. So if you to, to counteract that, if you're using a uh, liner that you can take out and wash, you're good to go. Now, talk to me about the positives and the negatives of wool. Okay. Well, if you're talking about <clears throat> a sleep system in particular, one of the biggest downsides of wool that I think a lot of people, especially when they first get into bushcraft, everyone touts wool blanket, wool blanket. I'm going to take a wool blanket. Well, a wool blanket. If if I had this system. I could pretty much just lay down anywhere on a clear night and just go to sleep. I don't have to do really any work at all, um, especially if I have a pad or something to sleep on with me as well. Um, a wool blanket is, is not going to keep you as warm as an insulative system like this, this snug pack bag would. It requires that you have skills that you're putting in play with that blanket to make it effective. And so like last <coughs> night, you know, we slept in the same shelter. I had a blanket, he had this. If the fire went out, for him, <laughs> it wasn't as much of an issue. I didn't get up. He just up. kept on sleeping. <laughs> he didn't get up once. He was out cold. But I, you know, I had to get up in the night. We had a great insulative bed. You know, we had lots of pine. We had, like, probably a foot of pine needles underneath of us. Um, so good, you know, protection from conduction and everything. Good uh, uh, shelter over our head to capture the fire's heat. But once that fire burned down, I would get a little bit chilled. I'd have to get up and, and stoke the fire. Um, but Con Conduction you know. is when you're touching a cold something, it sucks the heat out of you just for you. Mm -hmm. And I know someone's going to ask me that. <laughs> yeah, cool. <coughs> um, but a wool blanket is more versatile um, as far as it, it, it requires a little more work and skill to use effectively to be comfortable. Um, but I, I did sleep really well. I did get up one, I really it was just one time early this morning to put wood on the fire. Uh, the rest of the night I slept soundly. But the, the thing that's great about this is it's just a big rectangle of fabric, right? So, whereas his bag is more or less just a bag. I mean, if you're, yeah, you're creative, bag. if you're creative, you could figure some cool things out to do with it. You could add extra insulation in there with, with duff or something if you needed to. But a blanket's great because it's so simple. Um, one of the things I do with a wool blanket is I actually treat it as a garment as well. So I, I'll carry a couple of blanket pins with me. And I can actually wrap up in this thing and wear it um, sort of like this, pinned together around the neck. And I might put a belt around my waist, and I essentially have a jacket then. Um, and so it becomes a garment, and you can wear it around. If it's chilly outside, you're around the fire, I can sit here, wrap up in it, I can carve, I can do things. You can do that to an extent with a, with a sleeping bag. but. Kind of. You're not going to get up and walk around in it. You, you could have a, a sack race, I guess, yeah. if you wanted to. But, <laughs> but, um, 
so yeah, that's one benefit. It's a, it's a, it's a versatile item that can be put to service. Uh, you might have seen me in the background of some of the videos yesterday hauling many, many pounds of duff in for our bed and for insulation on the thing. So it's a, it's a means to carry things. Uh, I, sometimes I'll even put firewood in it and just grab the four corners just like uh, Tyler showed you with his VersaCloth and just haul things with it. So it's, it's a little more versatile. And uh, one of the big upsides with a shelter, especially like what we had last night, I didn't have to worry nearly so much about embers, like he mentioned. Yeah. Um, I do, you know, they, wool burns, it doesn't melt. Yeah. Um, the hole yeah, that he would get it. from an ember would probably end up being this big, nasty hole where my ember would probably burn part way in and just go out. Um, it will, not to say that it won't burn all the way through, I actually have a hole in this blanket because of that, but it's not, it's, it's much more fire resistant. And you can just sew that shut and be good. Yeah, you just My sew it My personal up. concern with something like this is it melts to me because it's basically plastic, right. so you really don't want that to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, uh, but, you know, in, in bushcraft it's just, Again, like I said, I like simple tools that can be put to many uses, and a wool blanket, to me, um, ha it fits that bill, and it's also traditional. I, you know, I like using the traditional gear, and, and sleeping bags are a pretty recent invention. I mean, they didn't start really making sleeping bags on a regular basis, probably until... Well, World I'd, War II, wasn't it? I, actually, earlier than that, probably yeah. very late 1800s, early 1900s, yeah. I think, is when they first started making bags uh, for sale um, for people camping but so, um, before that mm -hmm. and even after that if you couldn't afford one of those people still use wool blankets because yeah. they're cheaper um, and you know one of my things that I don't like about sleeping bags is zippers um, in the country that we we travel in up here not so much in the mountains uh, but in other places where we have desert areas and things like that there's sand everywhere sand gets in the works it, it gums up your zippers and zippers can break um, and so that that turns your sleeping bag into a sleeping sheet quilt sheet thing <laughs> which is still you could still use it but it's, it's not going to be as for a hammock now <laughs> <laughs> right so, so so yeah again you know any little thing goes wrong with this i can whip out my sewing kit and, and stitch it up or whatever so it's easy to repair easy to take care of fireproof it repels water um, I could go on and on. <laughs> yep. If you look at my kit, um, especially, you know, we're early spring. So uh, like he said, it was every bit of like mid twenties last cold. night. It was below freezing. Um, I was warm. All of my equipment, yeah. my clothing, my hats, everything is, is almost always wool <laughs> in some form. Um, it's just a, a superior fabric, um, time tested, time proven. It's sustainable. You know, it's not a, it's not derived from uh you know petrochemicals and things like that so it's it's it, it fits with my fits with my philosophies very well but so one thing that i like to do personally is i mix this stuff i've got many years yeah. in the military yeah. I, I i was a mountaineering guide in alaska so i've got a whole bunch of gore-tex and a whole bunch of wool so i like both yeah one thing you can do is to, is if you're mixing these two when it's really nasty cold this sleeping bag's gonna work great, but if you throw a wool blanket over the top of this sleeping bag and just give it a tuck, you're gonna be in just, yep. just sleep in heaven. Um, that also prevents the fire from hitting your sleeping bag and it gives you options. Um, where this is so light, I, I support it. I, I say it's something to bring, it's something that is, you can you can whip it out emergency quick and crawl mm -hmm. in, crawl in your bag and go to sleep and be yep. warm all night long. Yep. Um, it doesn't take any effort, it's really simple to use. Mm -hmm. But again, I keep coming to it so lightweight. Mm -hmm. um, the military sleep systems that I use, they're, they're decent, but they're just not, they're not that lightweight. A lot of military yeah. gear tends to be really heavy, but this is still fairly robust. If I remember correctly, this is one of their special forces uh, bags that they, they would sell to like a, a, a soldier um, to use downrange. And the cool thing about this is it's two bags, right? So if it's in the middle of the winter, you can throw these two together, throw a wool blanket over it. If it's the summer or if you're, you know, the, the, whatever changes, you can pull out this lightweight bag or even use this other bag. So you've got like a summer bag, a fall bag, and together they're a winter bag. And that I really like because it gives you options. But the key is knowing what the capabilities and downfalls of each of them are. So if you don't have the skill set for this, you're going to be cold. 
if you don't have a skill set here, you'll be warm. But if you do have a skill set, you'll be better off long term with something like this. Or you can mix it up. Yep. The key is to get the knowledge and use it. But there, there's no wrong answer in this. They all work. Yeah. All right, guys, if you're interested in this snug pack, I'll leave a link in the comment section. Thank you to Ben from Living Survival for giving me this bag. It worked great. I'm, this is going to be my new sleeping bag system that I use on a regular basis because it's much lighter than what I own. Um, it was very warm. I slept great. Felt like I was sleeping in a pillow. And uh, uh, check his chin out, channel out if you haven't already. It's a huge channel. It's Living Survival. I'll leave that in the comment section as well. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down here and hit my subscribe button. Thank you for watching T Jack Survival. Right. Let's see. That looks good. Right there. Oh, yeah, this is like. <laughs> it's just because the wind I'll is just like use my directly from. The, yeah. <laughs> we might just do a different location. Yeah. Smoking me.